Hello, and welcome to the 10th episode of the weekly Google Cloud Platform podcast. I am Francesc, and I'm here with Mark. Mark Mandel, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing, Francesc? Pretty good, pretty good. Just getting very excited about this episode. We're going to be talking with some of our good friends, Google some developer experts. Some good friends in Australia. Yeah. Makes me very happy. So we're going to be interviewing them about GD. What is a Google developer expert? What yeah. do they do? And how do you become one? Yeah. And even talk a little bit more about big data and some of our tooling in that area too and how some of our actual users are using it and yeah. the use cases they have. So that's yeah, that's too. that's really the kind of people I really enjoy talking to is people that are using our technologies for things that we did not even expect. Yeah. Because that's how you learn uh, how to improve your products, really. So yeah. very, yeah. very useful people. Definitely. Um, and if anyone's out there using our products and want to come on the podcast, please don't hesitate to get in contact. We'd love oh, to yeah. speak to you. Yep. Should we do Should we do the, do the contact thing? method? Well, what's the email address? The email address is hello at gcppodcast.com. On Reddit? Uh, it's the subreddit slash r, no, r slash gcppodcast. <laughs> on Twitter? At gcppodcast. The website? gcppodcast.com. And Google Plus? Plus GCP podcast. There no, is. plus Google Cloud Platform podcast. That was plus, it, you can actually get to it. For, you can actually go google.com plus GCP podcast. And it works. Oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> there you go. I almost got it this time. There we go. Good. So, yeah, if you have any, like, let's do it again. If yep. someone wants to send us emails about cool things of the week, questions or topics that you could like us to cover, whatever. Yeah. Uh, we always like receiving emails from you people. Yeah, it makes this job fun. So we definitely want to hear it. Yep. Wonderful. So we have we have a great cool thing of the week this week. I'm pretty excited about this one. It's coming yep. up in March. I'm between excited and slightly scared because there's a lot of work coming on. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're going to be, uh, we actually just uh, announced the next GCP Next. So just the next GCP Next. Next that's GCP good, Next. Yeah, that's good. good way of putting it. Uh, so GCP Next, which is the Google Cloud Platform big event uh, yeah. taking place in San Francisco. Pier 48, if I'm not mistaken, yep. and it's going to be on March 23rd and 24th. Yes, it is. So what is this about? So it's the big Google Cloud Platform event. Um, so if you're interested in a Google Cloud Platform and you want to come down and meet the DAs, meet the developer advocates, uh, meet the engineers, I'm sure yep. they're probably also just as exciting. Product, Product managers. managers. Yep. yep. Um, here, probably, I'm guessing there are going to be some exciting announcements. I can confirm nothing. Yeah, there's but... completely confidential things like, <laughs> nah, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's going to be really cool stuff. Uh, I know I'm very excited about, about the keynotes. Also, because we're going to have some really cool people at the keynote. We have Urs going to be speaking. Nice. Uh, also, Diane. So, yeah, basically. Yeah. The, Brian Stevens. Brian Stevens. So, the top people of Google Cloud Platform are going to be there for you. Yep. Um, so, I think it's an opportunity not to miss. Jeff Dean's going to be there. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Jeff Dean. Yeah, he's kind of important, yeah, yeah, I guess. A little bit. He's a smidge, you know. That's yeah. fine. But um, yeah, we're going to be running like a GCP boot camp the day before as well. So full day instructor-led training. Um, really like, yeah, we'll definitely have the link in the show notes. But yeah, if you have anything interesting you want to hear about Google Cloud Platform and you want to sort of mingle with people who are also doing Google Cloud Platform things, GCP Next is the event to get to. Yep. I know I'm going to be there. Actually, we're going to be there. Uh, we're planning on recording a special episode, our first episode outside of the studio. Yeah, yeah. So if you're interested in being in the podcast but don't want to like do a lot of work, if you're physically at the event, we will be around and we'll be looking to interview people at the event. So yep. please definitely come up to us and say hello. Yep, cool. Okay, so that was our cool thing of the week. Now, I guess it's time to go say hi to our friends in Australia. Let's talk to our friends in Australia. We are joined today by the very first Google developer experts to be coming on air with us on the podcast. I'm very excited also because both of them live in my hometown of Melbourne, Australia, which makes me double as excited. Nice. Uh, we are joined today by Graham Poley. Uh, and uh, Pablo Cave, which I think I just messed up your last name. Yeah, you're just, it's so both, of you, both of you. Uh, yeah. how, how do you pronounce your last name so that, that people know how to get them right? It's Caif. <laughs> it's easy. If yeah. you speak Spanish, it's easy. It's Spanish. It's, it's easy. It's Polly. Of course. <laughs> and it's What's Polly. Even worse is I, it's Polly as in Polly wants a cracker. Yeah, and it's even worse as I asked you beforehand and then messed it up in exactly the yeah. wrong way. <laughs> so Fine. thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, 
Uh, like I said, you're both Google developer experts. Uh, I know you've been in the program for a little while. You're both down in Melbourne, Australia, which makes me super happy. Um, any mini money mo Graham, you're on our document first. Why don't you give us a little bit of background about yourself, You know who you are, what you do, um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll get to Pablo. Sure. So first of all, thanks for having us do the podcast. We're also very excited to do it. Uh, my name's Graham Polly. Uh, I'm a software engineer. Um, also a Google developer expert, as you've pointed out already. And I'm actually a Google developer expert for a cloud platform. And I, I specialize in big data. So work a lot with tools like BigQuery, Cloud Dataflow, Dataproc, Google Cloud Storage, and also, yeah, the usual compute engine uh, type things as well. And based down in Melbourne. Nice. Uh, what about you, Pablo? Yeah, so I'm also very happy to be here. Um, I'm a Google developer expert, uh, same as Graham for the uh, Google Cloud platform and uh, software engineer as well. Been working in the field for something like uh, 13 years. Done a few things like uh, mobile development, web development, but lately been mostly specializing in, in big data and, and all the sort of stuff. Nice. You are Google Developer Experts. Could you tell us a little bit, first of all, for how long and how you became a Google Developer Experts, but also what, what, what is it? What is being a Google Developer Expert? Maybe Graham can start. Sure. Yeah, sure. So um, both myself and Pablo, we came on board as Google Developer Experts around the same time, actually at the same time. Uh, that would have been about three months ago now. So we're fairly new to the program. And what it means is we're recognized by Google. There's about, I believe, 250 of us worldwide. So we're recognized for our expertise in a specific area of Google technologies or products. In our case, it's Google Cloud Platform. We do a lot of blogging. We go and talk at conferences. We help the local community. We help startups. We do mentoring. And we also get a yearly trip. Once a, once a year, we get to meet all the other Google developer experts, which is really cool. Uh, this year, it was in Mountain View, just in uh, last month, which is really cool. Yep, I saw you guys there. Yeah, and we get direct access to the engineering teams as well. So we get early access to builds and features and new products and stuff like that. And we can reach out directly to the engineering teams. And that's, that's a huge help for us, especially when we're using the products. We can talk to the engineering teams directly. It's, it's awesome. And we also get foresight into product roadmaps and that kind of thing. So that's being a Google developer expert. And then the journey uh, about how we actually became Google developer experts, is, it's quite an interesting one. So myself and Pablo, we were doing a lot of work with BigQuery. And we were just blown away by how cool it was and how much data we could smash through. And we wrote a blog about it. And that blog got picked up by our good friend Felipe Hoffa, who I believe you guys know quite well. Yes. Yeah, we interviewed him uh, two ago. episodes ago. Yeah, something yep. like that. Ah, two episodes ago. Yeah, yeah, cool. So, yeah, Felipe's a great guy. And he, he actually picked up our blog. He found our blog. And he shared it internally. And then it actually went, it made its way up to Urs Holzler, who then reshared it on his G Plus page. Yes. And then from there, it just kind of snowballed. And then we, we started doing more blogs. And then what actually happened was... Um, the Dataflow team, so Google Cloud Dataflow team, reached out to us and they said, look, we got this new product in beta. It's called Cloud Dataflow. We think it would be pretty cool for you guys to be beta testers on it. So we said, yeah, absolutely. It's, and we jumped in. We started playing with it. We gave them feedback. And then after that, um, the product manager for um, Google uh, Cloud Dataflow, a guy called Rafael Fernandez, he then nominated us to become Google Developer Experts. And that's the key to being a Google Developer Expert. You have to be nominated by a Google employee. So once you're nominated by a Google employee, then you do an application. So myself and Pablo did that. And then you go through a round of interviews. They make sure you really know what you're doing and you really know what you're talking about. And then you finally get accepted to the program. And that's pretty much the journey of how we became Google Developer Experts. Nice. So, Pablo, you've been relatively quiet. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the work you do at Shine, um, and the, the, the tools you use, and how they go together, and what you're up to? 
Yeah, so uh, first of all, Shine is a software consultancy based in Melbourne. Um, and we do a lot of work with uh, big data. So we, um, our, one of our, our main client is uh, Telstra. Yeah, it's a, it's one of the largest ISP, you know, and we'll talk a little bit later about more in depth about the stuff we've been doing there. But, uh, basically, you know, uh, we, um, need to enter in just tons and tons of, uh, ad serving logs and process them. We use a whole combination of, uh, stuff in between, uh, you know, Google Cloud platform tools and a bit of AWS as well. Basically, the idea is to, help them to understand the, all the data they're using to basically get like useful insights to all the information they have. That's very cool. That's very cool. So I think one of the highlights for me when actually I probably got to know uh, you and Graham from Shine Technology and stuff was uh, the blog post about the 17 minute train challenge. Oh yes. Which I thought was, was, was quite exciting. Do you want to uh, tell our listeners a little bit about that and how that came to be? And I mean, even like, where did that idea even come from? Yeah, sure. So um, I was actually, so my, I take the train to work <laughs> and I was sitting on the train coming in. I was reading, um, as you do, yeah, the tech news and something popped up in my feed and it was um, Google have announced um, a new product called uh, Dataproc. I went, oh, that, that looks kind of cool. So I started reading about it, and I was actually chatting with Pablo at the same time on, on IM, and we just got talking about it. And then one of the things in the announcement, I think it was on the Google Cloud Platform blog, it was, we can spin up a, a Hadoop or Spark cluster in under 90 seconds. And I thought, wow, that's a, that's a bold claim. That's a really bold claim. And we got to thinking, and we thought, Let's vet that. Let's see if we really can do that. So we came up with the idea of could we actually spin up a Hadoop slash Spark cluster using Dataproc in the time it takes for my train to depart Melbourne City and get home to my last stop. But not only that, so we thought that was a little bit easy. Uh, we also threw a few other uh, curveballs into the mix. So it would have to spin up the cluster uh, so my, my train commuted 17 minutes. So it would have to spin up the cluster. It would have to be able to run a Hadoop job. It would have to be able to run an Apache Spark job. And I should also be able to SSH into uh, some of the nodes in the cluster and have a play with them and use the cloud shell from uh, the browser and all that kind of stuff. And then finally, tear down all, the whole cluster before the train got into the last station. So that's really how the idea came about. It was just myself and Pamela were chatting about it. We thought it'd be really cool, something original, and it would actually be a, a good way to see if Dataproc really was that fast. It could it really stand up a cluster that quickly? And so we did it. And um, the, one of the great things about it is actually we just tethered it off my phone. Nice. <laughs> so we stood up a Dataproc cluster. I can't remember. Uh, I think there was eight nodes in the cluster or something like that all tethering off 4G. It's crazy. So I see here I do see here that you didn't quite complete the challenge. You got, you got you got very close though. Got very very close. So I was pulling into the last station and I had initiated a shutdown of the cluster and unfortunately the cluster just didn't shut down in time. So I got to spin it up I got to run a Hadoop job. I got to run a, a Spark job, SSH into uh, some of the nodes, but the cluster just didn't come down in the time it, it, it needed before I got home. But I, I marked it down as a as a success. So, so it was deleting. Yeah. It was it was in the process. It was of in the process of deleting. Exactly. I think I yeah. missed it by about thirty seconds. That was there you go. seriously. So well, yeah, was it, was it recorded? I could have loved to see that as a video of seeing you panicking, trying to stop the, the cluster <laughs> right before the trains arrive into the station. Unfortunately, so yeah. So unfortunately, it, it wasn't recorded. Uh, didn't have the foresight for that one. Did do a blog post about it. So you're, you're more than welcome to, to read the blog and it's got screenshots in there. Um, it was a very uber scientific challenge, as you can tell. Jump on a train, tether a phone, <laughs> spin up a, a data prop cluster. But one of the things that I, I failed to consider or that we failed to consider before we did it was um, that there's black spots 
on the train yes. <laughs> for 4G. So uh, every now and then I'd lose my connection and I'd lose my SSH session and be like panic, panic, panic until the until my connectivity came back. And then, yeah, but it was good fun. It was good fun. It's something, and it, it, again, it, it was the originality of it as well. And the blog post got quite a lot of attention and I think it got shared again internally at Google. So that's really cool. And that, that leads into the, the Google Developer Expert stuff. That's the kind of stuff we do as well, you know, writing blog posts like that. Yeah, no, and you, you were saying there's not a very scientific method of uh, comparing <laughs> uh, performance. I actually, yeah. I, I have this video that I really like of um, uh, one of the uh, people from the Kubernetes team, Brendan Burns, trying to measure how long it takes to start up a Kubernetes cluster and comparing it to how long it takes for him to prepare a latte. Oh, so you know, <laughs> sounds like a lot of fun. That's yeah, cool. so entirely like, scientific. Yeah. Entirely, entirely scientific. Yeah. Of course. No, that sounds really great. All right, cool. So, and obviously, you're doing stuff with like Dataproc, and you're doing stuff with big data and BigQuery. Um, do you want to talk a bit more about the sort of big data problems you're working on? Obviously, you said you were talking about analytics and stuff like that, but can you sort of talk a bit more more concretely about the stuff that you're building and, and why you chose Google Cloud Platform and the tools you have um, to solve those problems? Yeah, so I mentioned before, we, we're basically dealing with tons and tons of app uh, serving logs. What we have uh, come to, you know, work on is a, basically in a statistical model that analyze all those logs which is uh, developed by a, a veteran data scientist. And uh, that's the main bit we actually, you know, started using uh, Dataflow for all the sort of uh, ETL work and, and actual, the actual statistical model implementation, each one of the steps. And we found that it was very helpful, helpful in, in that aspect. And we also use uh, BigQuery, of course, to store all this uh, huge amount of data and we can run ad hoc uh, queries pretty quickly, like go through terabytes of data in a <laughs> in a matter of seconds, which I remember at the beginning uh, led, left a few people very, very ad- adonish uh, about all this stuff. <laughs> like, they were, wow, I can't believe you, you. You can really tell me, you, you're telling me you can actually run like query like terabytes of data in 15 seconds. Yeah. But with Oracle, it takes like, uh, you know, I don't know, one hour, you know. And then when they were seeing, they were like, oh, I can't believe this. So I'm curious, what's the largest data set that you've put through BigQuery? So, yeah. So I think the the amount of data that we have up at Telstra Pabs is, uh, what do we have? So we're doing about 5 billion rows a month. Um, that's what we were ingesting into BigQuery. Is that right, Pablo? About 5 billion rows a month. And then we've run queries over several years. So we've gone up to about, uh, about 100 billion rows, and it was about 15 terabytes. Yeah, it's difficult because we've got a several projects going on. So you sort of need to, you know, get on all of them. <laughs> um, yeah, but I think something like that. Uh, so for us, it's quite a lot of data. Cool. A lot of data. Cool. And so what sort of what sort of things are you providing for the customers? Obviously, you said like statistical models and stuff. Is that... You're helping them with some things? Uh, yeah, so basically um, uh, we um, we have implemented all these uh, statistical models. Then they use uh, like uh, BI tools to access to that. So we, we all the results of running the model get stamped into BigQuery. Uh, and we also have been trying to help them lately uh, to understand how uh, Dataflow works because, uh, you know, it's, it's always good for them to... Uh, get a very good understanding uh, uh, of how they can optimize uh, the algorithms so they can work much better, you know, in this and the data flow programming model. Um, and, and we also been giving a few technical talks about BigQuery and data flow, you know, to help them understand the advantages you can get when using the Google Cloud Platform products. Cool. It, it seems like you've basically been working on, on big data for quite a while and you've been blogging about it. And thanks to just blogging, you ended up becoming one of our GDs. What is your advice for other people that want to become a GD? Yeah, that's a really good question. So I would say it's a, it's a very good program. And at least I can speak for myself and say I'm happy in the program. And what I like most about it, like I, I touched on earlier, would be getting direct access to the engineering teams. That's just awesome. 
like last month we were over in San Francisco uh, attending the GDE Summit, which is that yearly event that I talked about where we all come together for a year, uh, for a couple of days. But around that, we actually went out and we met the, myself and Pablo went and met all the data flow engineering teams and we sat with them and we discussed how we use the tool and the product. And uh, that was really cool. And they actually sat with us and they actually did a code review. So the, the tech lead for Dataflow reviewed our code, uh, Francis Perry. Nice. That was just awesome. unparalleled in, in terms of awesomeness. And she was mm -hmm. like, yeah, you could do some optimization here and performance enhancement here and change this and it'd be a little bit more modular. We were like, oh my God, trying to actually code while she was telling us this stuff. Hmm. And then after that, we went up and we met the Dremel and uh, BigQuery engineering teams in Seattle. Like, that's just cool, right? Where you can sit with these guys and talk to them and, and talk to engineers, being engineers ourselves, about how these tools work. They don't give up all the juicy details, of course, of how, <laughs> for example, uh, Dremel works under the hood. But we, we're privy to some some information that not a lot of people would get. That's and, th and that's cool. one thing I, I particularly like about the program. Um, the second part, how do people get into the program if they are interested? It would, it would really be getting your name out there. So uh, start off doing blogging, go to your local GDG group in your city. So most cities will have a GDG, which is Google Developer Group. Um, that's officially sponsored by Google. Going to the meetups, uh, chatting with uh, the guys and girls at those meetups, and then if you're really, really keen to get into the program, um, you really got to make that connection with someone in Google or be nominated. That's the only way to get in. And I think that's a, it's a good system because you, that's the way Google really get good people in. It's, it's if you're nominated. So yeah, my advice would be just to, to to get publicity, to get your name out there, blogging, doing talks. Because uh, like, you don't have to be a GDE to go out and do this stuff. You, you can go out and do this stuff without being a GDE, right? So you can give a talk at a local meetup, or you can yeah. write a blog yeah. on BigQuery, or Kubernetes, or Dataflow, or Dataproc. You don't have to be a GDE. And then that will, if it's a, a good blog, and it's got good content, I'm sure it'll be picked up by someone, and, and that's how it all... At least that's how it started for us. So I hope that I hope that answers your question. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. sounds like very good advice. I had not thought about the about Google Developer Group. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. that's a great place to start. That's yeah, that's that, that would be the the first place I'd start. Yeah. So for me, uh, again, it's, it's pretty much pretty similar to what Graham saying said before. In terms of meeting the engineers, for me, it was the the top of the, you know, the cherry the cherry on the on the pie. And it was really exciting, uh, you know, get to talk to them, to the people who actually have been developing the tools we used, know them from top to bottom. I was very privileged to have uh, also the, the leader, uh, Francis Perry, reviewing my uh, slide deck. I was giving a talk in the Dev Fest, mm -hmm. and she sat with me. We went through all the slide decks. She's, you know, started giving me recommendations about how to, you know, present different things and stuff like that. And for me, that was really, really exciting, and it was a privilege to answer the second part of the question. I know this is pretty much what also what Grant said in terms of. If you're really keen on getting into the, uh, you know, the expert program, you need to make visible yourself in terms of, you know, writing blogs or participating in, in Google developer groups, uh, giving talks if you can. That's always good, you know, trying to, to present stuff, talk about the technology. That sounds good. Excellent. All right, well, we'll wrap up soon, but is there anything else you wanted to maybe discuss or bring up or plug or anything like that? Um check out our blog. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. We'll put the link on the show notes. Yep, that's for sure. Definitely. Beautiful. Uh, ah, Pablo? Um, you mentioned that it was important to, to be out there, give talks, go to conferences. Where can we find you? Are you going to any conference soon? Yes, we applied for a few talks. There is one coming up in London about big data. At the moment, it hasn't been confirmed yet. There is also the coming Google Cloud Platform event uh, now in March in San Fran. 
we also apply for that one. But uh, we also, you know, give some talks in the local developer groups. So uh, I myself given a talk in uh, the end of February about uh, data flow in the GDG group here in Melbourne. I think we can add the uh, details about the event in the notes. Definitely. Graham, was there anything else? Um, no, and then just the usual stuff. Um, uh, Twitter, myself and Pablo are, are really active on Twitter, and we we have some pretty cool conversations with uh, people like Felipe and Francis and all those guys uh, in the US. So you can you can get us on Twitter anytime. Um, I'm sure my Twitter handle will be made public, and Pablo's too. Yes, absolutely. And li- like Pablo said, we've got a few talks talk proposals in the pipeline. Uh, one of the, the biggest one that I'm most excited about, which Pablo just touched, would be the GCP Next. And that's in, in March. Now, unfortunately, I've got a baby on the way on the exact, due, due date is the exact same day. So it's the March 23rd. Pablo will be uh, heading over to that. Um, and hopefully... Well, congratulations on that, by the way. Yeah, congratulations Thank you very much. That. It's going to be uh, first yeah. baby. So um, the storm is about to arrive at my doorstep in about nine, <laughs> in about nine weeks. <laughs> well, Fingers crossed, that would be really cool if we actually got to speak at GCP Next. Uh, which is we have no control over that. Us too, <laughs> but uh, I, I think wasn't people I, who may listen to the podcast may listen may may have control. So that's not what I was hinting at at all in <laughs> any way whatsoever. So what will be, sure, what will sure. be will be wonderful. Well, thank you very much for joining us. I think we're going to have to wrap it up there for time's sake. I'm sure we could talk for hours on end, but. Uh, yeah, thanks so much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. And yeah, likewise. Thank you very much. Looking forward to reading your future blog posts. Indeed. Yeah. Well, we'll talk to you maybe then. Bye. Thanks again to Graham and Pablo for joining us. Really good conversation. Enjoy getting outside of Google people to come in and, and speak. It's always great fun. Yeah, that was that was a very fun conversation. Yeah. So moving on to the question of the week. Uh, Francesca, I believe you have a question today. I do have a question. And it's actually coming from a couple of people that I've met before. Uh, there's a lot of people that try to do things like uh, integration tests or even continuous integration. Where yep. What you're trying to do is to deploy continuously. Yep. And deploying continuously, it's pretty hard. There's ways of doing it, but, yep. you know, there's a skill there. Then there's deploying continuously to App Engine. Oh, yeah. And all of a sudden, it doesn't sound that easy anymore because you have to use uh, G Cloud and uh, there's a bunch like of things that you have to integrate, and, yeah. authentication and so on. So the question was like, is there an easy way to do deployments to App Engine? Like, say, programmatically? Yeah, as part of the script, something that's going to be happening very regularly. So uh, I got shown this not too long ago, and I found it quite exciting. There is an API that we have that enables you to programmatically deploy to App Engine. Nice. It's it's really cool. Um, it's both a REST API and a, and a gRPC API, so you have a, you have a choice. If you want to, you want whichever one you want to use. Um, it's pretty cool. You can upload your content, like so basically your resources up into Google Cloud Storage. Um, you send up a JSON manifest file to tell App Engine, hey, this is where my stuff is. This is how I want to deploy it. This is where I want it to go. And then it goes off and does its thing. Um, and then there's also stuff in there for like switching modules, so which like which modules you want to go to, and like also doing all your, your standard versioning stuff too. Yeah. Like I want 50% of my traffic to go to this one or 10% or 100%. Um, yeah, and like also introspection. You can also do introspection through it too. Like, what have I got running? What versions do I have? What apps do I have? Um, it's pretty neat. I was actually really impressed with it. So, if you're looking at doing like continuous delivery type of stuff and you want to be able to push to App Engine, this looks like like a really good way of doing it. Yeah, that sounds really cool. I I could definitely see it as a, some something integrated directly with Jenkins or Travis or something like that. So basically, as soon as you have a new file that yep. has changed everything, you get a bunch of tests, gets deployed somewhere, and then someone can just go and verify that everything's working. So fine. I'm actually thinking we should do this for the podcast because right now every Wednesday we manually push it up. If we had a service that built it, push it up to App Engine every Wednesday, like at like 10 a.m. or 8.30 so or something. So you're proposing using Google Technologies to host the Google Cloud Platform podcast? <laughs> yes, I am. I Crazy. Am. This would actually make, <laughs> make my life a lot easier <laughs> rather than getting up at 7.30 every Wednesday to push out a podcast. Yeah, I'm not waking up early. So. <laughs> yeah, no, that sounds, that sounds like a good idea. We should, we, we should try it. And yeah. then open source the code, of that, course. Of course, <laughs> of course. Wonderful. All right, that sounds great. Well, Francesc, uh, have you got 
Anything else on your radar? Obviously, GCP Next will be coming up for you. So GCP Next is coming on soon. But yep. before that, I actually <laughs> have a bunch of stuff coming on. Uh, so by the end of this week, I will go to Belgium for yep. FOSDEM. There's going to be a go dev room. So if you're around, come say hi. Uh, it's going to be fun. I'm going to be talking about uh, the state of Go. So what is the Go project uh, doing lately? Yep. It's going to be a quite interesting talk, a bunch of new things in the language, not really in the language, but in the tooling. Uh, so I hope that there's going to be a bunch of people there. We're going to have nice conversations. After that, DevFest in Paris. Nice. Where I'm going to be talking about gRPC and Kubernetes Sweet. and building, I think that the name of the talk may be at the end, building microservices like a Googler. Oh, yeah. I think we need to get gRPC on here. I'm getting really excited about that. We should definitely talk about gRPC. We actually just mentioned that, yeah, we have like RPC references yeah. uh, for the admin API. Yeah. We should definitely talk about yeah. that. Maybe next episode. Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? And that's pretty much it I think for now like that's in the next month that's basically. in the next month yeah, yeah that sounds well, good what about you so I will be at the launch hackathon on the 26th of February where uh, is that that's in San Francisco nice. uh, which is good yeah, I'm not doing too much travel at the moment which is nice uh, so I'll be helping people hack at that and probably getting no sleep um, very excited about Game Developers Conference. Um, I'll be there at the booth pretty much all the time. Um, we're looking at doing some really fun events. We're having a developer day uh, for, for that. So if you're interested in Google Cloud Platform, um, please check that out. We'll, we'll be doing all sorts of fun things. But we'll also be doing some talks um, sort of at the booth as well, showing off a few bits and pieces we got. I think we might see some of our demos, which would be really cool. Nice. Um, but yeah, I love games, so I'm super excited about I know. GDC. I was... I was last year at GDC. Uh, it was an amazing conference. So really looking forward to that. Too. For, yeah, it's going to be great. GCP Next, obviously, I'll be there as well. And then I'll also be at Strata, uh, helping nice. out with some stuff there too. So that'll be good fun. Very nice. Well, I think that this is enough for today. Definitely. We've... So as always, thank you so much for being here with me. Thank you very much for being here with me. And talk to you all next week. See you next week. Bye.